Greetings. It is, I believe, March 3rd, 2022, third decade, 21st century. Um, but we're not talking about socio political topics, thank God. There's plenty of other people doing that, and there's no shortage of topics that could be discussed. But instead, I'll be uh, taking the time to respond once again to the lovely Miss Sheila Kay, who, again, thank you so much for watching. More importantly, thank you so much for commenting, creating the conversation, participating in the conversation. Uh, it's a it's a distraction I could really use right now. Um, obviously, this is the time of the year that my family and I kind of go internal as we remember all the events that took place around this time frame leading up to the uh, loss of our son on the 7th. But of course... Um, there's a new crisis in the family. <clears throat> Not ready to talk about it just yet, but there's a new family crisis that's being dealt with, so uh, thank you for the distraction. So without further ado, you guys know the deal. Uh, you comment, I'll read the responses, and then depending on the length of the comment, um, I may have to respond intermittently. So here we go. Miss Sheila K. responding to my video pertaining to responding to Ms. Sheila K. and Sophia. So Sheila K. writes, All right, so I think here are the general points, and if you want to do Skype or Zoom or uh, whatever, uh, sure, and I don't care about production, who has the time? Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose I could take a little bit of time to try to figure things out. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. And uh, I think maybe a Zoom would be a good idea just so that we can have that, that give and take. Uh, that that interaction but we'll work that out uh, so the first point is yeah I think uh, sensationalist headlines are a problem clickbait I think that part is an easy argument easy to win over any reasonable person the Jensen Ackles article is a straw man and easy easy to show why or easy to show why it's horrible pretending something is an issue that isn't and is easily disproved just by even getting into the meat of the article I complain about that all the time. Also on videos, politician A takes down politician B, or pundit A destroys pundit B, and so on. The schadenfreude feeding clickbait. And then you watch or read it, and it's like, well, that was disappointing. And that's if you even bother watching or reading them anymore. Usually it's easy to spot clickbait, though. Uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that, because uh, you're right. It's like they, they create a sensationalist headline, and that's not at all what happens. Um... The second point, the Vulture article wasn't clickbait, though. It was a long, convoluted article, yes, ironically trying to do what you said, trying to provide a deeper perspective of why. What is Joss, or what is Joss's complicated, lifelong shit that led him to need to be how he ended up being? That article is different and exclusive, a different kind of clickbait. I have opinions on why it got attention, and I'm sure they're different from yours. Uh, but I think it's difficult to argue that it had the same kind of basic, misleading, easy crap title that the Jensen Ackles one did. Uh, they're apples and oranges issues. Um, real quick on that note, Sheila, the one thing I got out of that article, and maybe we see it differently, I feel as though whether Joss was under the influence or Joss was feeling melancholy... I don't feel as though over the two days of the interview, he was really, really straightforward. At least the way that the article was written in my perspective was that he was kind of like, eh, yeah. so the reporter had to do their very best, um, which is why there's like a lot of like uh, backstory, context building, etc. So, and I don't think he did the greatest job defending himself. Um, where, you know, like when you look at the whole Jensen Ackles thing, you know, he has a start, a middle, and a finish where he's like, okay, yes, I had a horrible relationship on the set of Dark Angel, but, you know, as a calm, rational human being who doesn't like to play the victim, you know, I could see that there were all these other things going on and, you know, we're cool now. Um, and I suppose maybe that was what I was trying to ask was, you know, was Joss maybe going through a lot of stuff? You know, was it potentially impacting his ability to be rational? 
and I'm not saying there was, I'm not saying there wasn't, and I'm not saying regardless that I can condone his behavior. I'm just saying, you know, is there any other possibilities, you know, other than bad, bad man? Um, and I know I'm kind of speeding through this because I try to keep the videos under a half hour if I can. Uh, the third topic, but then you delved so much into other issues. Is it real? Is it a, a fad or piling on? And now, what I'm sure I agree most of all, the faux idea that the the de, the de facto Joss ba, uh, had to fall or fail to these abuse accusations and become a villain to prop up Snyder. Uh, you really think those two things cannot be true at once? And I particularly emphatically believe it's easy to take on perspectives. My love of sci-fi and fantasy includes those that have the best villains, which are those who believe they are the heroes. Before I continue, um, that was in the article. That was printed in the article. Uh, the uh, I, I forget the reporter's name, but the reporter uh, was the one that made that argument. Um, all right, let me go on. So those who can do things that binary thinking people would consider evil. Hang on a second. All right, sorry about that. Let's get back to it. Um, But that being said, it also included requisite judgment for many... Th oh, hang on. I, th I think... I, okay. Where are we at? Uh, uh, Amal Farouk from Legion, Kilgrave from Jessica Jones. Even in my background, my work was all about perspective taking. But that being said, it also included requisite judgment for many things to protect people. That's where the devil's advocate part comes in. It's plenty easy to say, oh, I get why that guy in power was the way he was. No problem. You can say uh, that about rapists, even child abusers, definitely people with serious mental health issues and a lot of murderers, thinking about their perspectives and why they ended up how they were and ended up doing what they did. Not all people can have the ability to understand that, but at the, at the same time that you emphasize that people, or with people, whether it be people who've done horrifying things to others or massive abusers in power, who are destructive to the lives of others on a grand scale, especially as they climb the ranks, you can choose to stop at, oh, I get them, and how they are the way they, how they are that way, and I feel for that wolf, but ultimately, some of us have to look out for the people who are harmed and damaged because somebody has to. Um, I'm stopping right there for a minute, because Sheila, I'm, I'm very curious, and there's no obligation to answer this, I get the impression that either you're a, an advocate of some kind, uh, whether human resources, uh, social work, I, I'm not sure. Um, if you want to answer that, please feel free to. Uh, but, but I get a, I get a heavy feeling that you know that it, that's kind of your profession. Um, uh, if no one is going to support children, victims, women, POC, who are disproportionately being harmed by those wolves, and we're just saying, oh, well, that poor wolf, then what is the point? We're just going to stop and say, oh, I get it, and then more than that, take a blame the victim position of people who gather the courage to speak up, because ultimately, to the victims of abuse, it doesn't matter why the abuser did it. It is harming them. If someone assaults me, for instance, I don't think it is my job to spend a lot of time reflecting on the perspective <laughs> so that I'm being open to it. First and foremost, I need to protect myself, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if that was written from a sarcastic perspective, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that's pretty cut and dry. Like, be, before this assault continues, can we discuss your motivations and, and why you got to this point? In, no, you're right. Defend yourself. Uh... In the situation of abuse of power, they need out of it and need help. Sometimes they need restitution because they cannot or will never work again. Sometimes they need support to ensure it doesn't happen to the next person. So I can understand how abusers become how they are. I've known and even worked with many. I've emphasized with and supported some to make amends when possible. But some need to be stopped, and it is possible to both emphasize and with and acknowledge why people become the abusers and they did and recognize it's not okay totally agree and it needs to stop 
if it's happened to enough people with enough support, uh, supporting stories and if their personal responses and behavior is consistent with narcissistic abusive behavior, you can probably be fair sure it was real enough that it needed an intervention even if you want to quibble over smaller details. That's what I mean about totality and what I mean about the idea that people speaking up against abuse is not automatically a pile on. A pile on is what happened to James Gunn by mostly trolls and if you noticed it's self-corrected. Generally the easy clear-cut fake ones do. Now there are always going to be some things that are hazy in between etc but yeah we definitely see things very differently. Seeing different perspectives is important but I don't think that you have much perspective on ending abuse or the significance of it or even the function of it. Now Sheila I'm not sure if that's an observation you're making um, based on my short videos or I don't feel as though it's accusatory um, and I, I don't feel as though you're, you're attempting to make a, a derogatory accusation. Uh, let me continue. Um, at least when you talk about it you only seem to see it as a pile on but what about the alternative perspectives of people who need closure, catharsis, people who've been harmed, people who really are trying desperately to, to eliminate and to use an overused phrase what they finally believe is a malevolent force. If people truly are victims, do they not deserve any say, any action? Do they not deserve to also have their perspectives deemed to be potentially genuine and relevant as well, and not simply attention-seeking or a pile-on? Are you able to see it from their perspective at all? Because every time you talk about their perspective, you dismiss it quickly. I find that part interesting. Well, Ms. Sheila, uh, in order to try to keep this relatively short and maybe maybe a longer uh, hand, a longer uh, Zoom call uh, might work out a little bit a little bit better. Um, you're right. I try to manage my time, and in doing so, I probably take on the perspective of the accused, and I try and in my videos, in in order to make them short. I, I advocate for the accused while it looks like you're advocating for the accusers um, while I'm not actually in my heart taking a side I'm just basically asking questions and you know sometimes when you're trying to make a short video you can't always explain all of your own individual context I have experiences um, in my recent past I've had some experiences which have hit me pretty hard and they've affected me quite deeply which gives me that knee-jerk reaction of is it what it is all right you know or is somebody being the first one to establish the lie or is somebody taking advantage of a trend or all of these things so you could you very well could make the case that I have some confirmation bias because of my own experience uh, and I, I can't argue that am I open-minded enough to see that yes the accusers may have a point of view absolutely because if if you try to avoid rushing to the judgment of insanity like well that's insane that person's stupid yada 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 if you believe the accuser is also a rational human being there could be no any number of things going on in their life causing that level of behavior the perception of abuse the perception of this and then of course the one thing that we haven't really had a chance to you know argue back and forth is sometimes it just is what it is it's actual abuse. One person is being cruel and abusive, whether they see it or not, whether they know it or not, whether they care or not, and one person is a legit victim, and then equally an opposite, one person's just trying to do their job, and the other person is, I don't know if straw man's the right word, but one person's just, you know, embellishing and making a big deal out of it. Um, I get the impression, it may be in your line of work, whether current or in the past, your job was to be an intermediary as well as potentially act on you know try to see both sides of the story and advocate for both in which case you know sometimes it just is what it is um, I'm not afraid to talk about this uh, I see a therapist I see a therapist um, I initially saw a therapist because I, I stand on a podium on average once a week where I have a captive audience for roughly six hours seven if you include the lunch 
and it's an opportunity for me to say just about anything if I don't stick to the script. And obviously I have some very, you know, personal feelings about any, any number of topics where I could slip in a comment and, you know, the wrong person hears it the wrong way, doesn't agree with your a comment, you know, it, it can snowball. You know, that one person, you know, could be having a really, really bad day, you know, just be coming off of a really bad experience and then they hear that comment and then it just blows up in their mind so then now they want to make a mountain out of a molehill um, because of how it affected them. And, you know, I it my personal perspective that we don't have to agree with is in within the last decade, I feel as though we've made a really, really big deal out of the victim. And I'm not saying I'm participating in the victim blame mentality. What I'm saying is, with from my perspective, in the last decade, we've made a really, really big deal out of celebrating victims. So I always have to question, from my own personal perspective, is it really what it is? Is this person taking advantage of the victim celebration trend? Or is there real stuff going on? Or is it coincidental? You know, the person's not trying to take advantage of a trend. You know, they're, 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 they're trying to, you know, vent. They're trying to make their feelings known. They're trying to maybe make an accusation. And it's just very unfortunate timing that it coincides with a trend. I'm, I'd like to think I'm well aware of all of that. Having talked it out with my therapist, the one thing I'm having some difficulty with, and I've got to own up to it. I, I have to own up to it. I'm a fan of Joss Whedon's creations. I enjoyed Buffy. I think I enjoyed it more so now in my later life than I would have back in my 20s when it was actually on the air. Uh, I was 20, 21 in 1997 when it first aired. Uh, and then it came off the air uh, right around my 27th birthday, uh, which I celebrated in Baghdad. Um, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it back then. I enjoyed Angel when it was on the air. And, of course, I didn't even know about Firefly. So I enjoyed Joss Whedon's creations. And then, of course, the way he's been portrayed, at least in my opinion, um, his portrayal is contrary to the accusations. Can both things be true? Absolutely. I'm aware of that. But I never quite, in my personal opinion, in my personal bias, I never quite put him in the same league as a Harvey Weinstein. And, yeah, I'm kind of like, is it, can it really be true? Not Joss. Not Joss. And you're right. That Vulture article did not do him any favors. You know, I, I think you said it. I think it was you who said it. I was looking forward to that Vulture article. Like, all right, Joss. All right, Joss. Let's knock this out of the park. You know, defend yourself. I'm not, I don't really think he did. I'm not, I don't really think he, he knocked it out of the park and like, okay. Joss is still a good guy. I think there's way too much gray area, way too much wiggle room, and I don't think he did a great enough job, a good enough job defending himself. Uh, and I'm more than happy to keep talking about this because, you know, it's not socio-political content. Um, but I, I got to admit to my, my, my weird little interpersonal bias. And the one reason I've also had a little bit of passion about it too is while Charisma Carpenter is gorgeous, and I'm sure she's probably an equally gorgeous person on the inside, as well as on the outside, and I know she's going to be 52, still gorgeous. Um, when she made her comments on the podcast, I was I was with her 100% up to one point, and we don't have to agree on this, but by all means, I would love your feedback, and if we have to do it over Zoom, you let me know. Um, the one thing she did say, and I'm going to paraphrase this, and I'm probably going to butcher it, let me just say what I'm going to say. Don't challenge it. Don't question it. Just let it go. And it, it, and basically it was like, let the victim say their piece. Let the victim get it off their chest. Don't question the legitimacy. Don't question the truth. Just accept it as it is. Like, accept it as truth. So, like, if I was to make an accusation towards you, like, you know, use all sorts of inflammatory language and, you know, Sheila this and Sheila that, and I'm the victim, so this is my truth, and, um accept it don't don't deny it don't don't question it and that's where I was like well hang on 
are we really attempting to say that just because you're taking the first step and claiming victim status, does the accuser not have a say so? You know, does 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 the accuser not have any defense, or you know, is it all based on the perceived level of authority and power of the accused? And maybe again, my own personal bias. I don't know if I really saw Joss as like that ultimate authority figure, uh, but I digress. Um, and that that was the one it, the thing I had a slight issue with was, well, hang on a second. If you accuse me of something, am I not allowed to defend myself? Am I not allowed to listen to your complaints and and see if maybe there's there's room for improvement, room for error, or are you are are you just allowed to strike first and that's it, one strike, and and it's done, and that's where I had a problem. And, and I don't know if we agree on that or not, but I was like, well, isn't there an opportunity for defense? And then if you go back to the Vulture article. Uh, not exactly the best job defending themselves. But again, Ms. Sheila, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting involved in the conversation. And let me know if you want to do a Zoom call. I'm here in the Eastern Time Zone. Um, I have a unique schedule. Um, I don't know where you're at. I don't know, you know what your free time is. I can definitely try to work something out. Uh, you let me know. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Until then... Uh, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for making it this far. You know, hit like, hit dislike if you don't like it. Uh, subscribe if you want to. Uh, hit the notification bell if you want to. But more importantly, uh, whether you do any of those things or not, leave a comment. Get involved. You know, offer your perspective up. If you leave a comment, I'll read it. And if you offer a perspective, you know, I'll read that too. Uh, but until then, if you made it this far, you're awesome.